and uh, go ahead. super. Okay, before we get started, I just want um, to acknowledge that we're gathered today here on the traditional and unceded territory of the Okanagan Selk people. We recognize, honor, and respect the presence of Indigenous people, past, present, and future. So welcome, everyone. Um, and I invited everybody to uh, let us know where you're located here in BC. Um, I wonder if you know whose traditional territories that you're joining us from. Jen is going, Jen is our, um, part of our team today with Brandy. Um, and I wanted to let you know that Jen's gonna post a map in the chat that shows British Columbia and the traditional territories that we're all on. So if any of you'd like to share that, feel free. Um, I'd also like you to consider um, WeBC, uh, we work for you. I mean, we want to provide webinars and sessions that are of value to you. So after today's session or the last thing we're going to do at the end of the day is we're going to do a feedback poll. So if any of you have like a burning question, you know, like you have a topic that you, you've never heard anybody talk on before and you'd really love to see it, we'd love you to add that suggestion at the end of today's session. So that's great. Okay. Um, I wanted to say hi, everybody. My name is Kathy Burrell, and I'm an entrepreneur in residence here at WeBC. Um, I was an old retailer. I had a clothing store, one in Abbotsford, BC, in the Lower Mainland, and one in White Rock, BC, for nearly 20 years. I was a fashion designer, and then I was a retailer. So all of you in businesses talking about burnout two days before December, man, do I feel you. So... Um, I want to talk a little bit about what we offer here at WeBC. We provide support for your small business journey. We offer financing to get your business started and, uh, more importantly, I think, operating capital to fuel your growth, and we hope you're all growing. We offer more flexibility than traditional lenders because we take a holistic approach and provide loans based on your business's viability, not based on a formula. This means we provide loans to a diverse range of women, women-owned businesses, and support you with integrated services, including complimentary training, mentoring, and business advising. So that part is, if you were to get a loan from WeBC, we start lending at $5,000, we go right up to $250,000. For the term of your loan, if you had a loan for five years with us, we would offer you complimentary mentoring and business advising for the entire term. So that's what makes us uh, a really good choice uh, for a lender. From essential business skills development to personalized business advice, we know the right questions to ask and the right resources to connect you with. In our mentoring programs, you can connect with a network of women entrepreneurs and experts around BC who can inspire who can support and inspire you. You can learn all about our mentoring program by going to we-bc.ca backslash mentoring. And we have a variety of programs and we're adding mentoring programs all the time. So uh, that would be great if you wanted to sign up for that. So, and while you're on our website, we would love for you to sign up for our e-blast newsletter. At WeBC, we don't want to bug you. We know that you're busy running your business, and we appreciate that. Um, but we have an e-blast newsletter we send out once a month. And this e-blast has a list of all our webinars, our we cafes, uh, mentoring programs that are coming up. If you sign up for our e-blast newsletter, you get one email a month, and you can essentially sign up for any of our programs right from that email. So it's fantastic. Okay, um, today we're, um, we're welcoming Catherine McCourt. She's a certified transformational life coach and business coach. So I've got a question for you. How do you prioritize your work? How do you manage your expectations and feel like you can turn off at the end of the day? Today, WeBC is hosting Catherine McCourt, who is a certified life and business coach for this WeBC to give you some insight into how to avoid burnout while you're starting and growing your business. Catherine will share her three-step productivity board, a system to support entrepreneurs to stay on track while focusing on the tasks that have the biggest impact, 
And isn't that the holy grail of business? Welcome, Catherine. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and uh, over to you. Welcome. Hi, everyone. My name is Catherine, as Kathy mentioned. Uh, I'm a certified transformational life and business coach. I've taken my 20 years of sales and business development profession and combined this with uh, professional coaching. Um, and I did that in 2020. So I feel like I've been coaching my whole life, mentoring others um, through their career and business, but um, decided to make it official in 2020 and, and get certified. So that's a little bit of my my background, but really great to see you all here. I'm so excited that you all decided to join this. This is a truly a topic that I'm super passionate about. Um, things that I have figured out uh, throughout my career in terms of how to work in a proactive way versus a reactive way has been just unparalleled to how my productivity has changed over the years. And um, I myself have suffered a burnout many years ago. So it was over 10 years ago. Uh, I continued to work through the whole thing, but was able to find uh, some grace through some really unique tools and things that um, I discovered just how I wanted to rethink how I approach my work. So today I wanna to keep it as simple as possible, although there is a lot of information to go through. And I encourage you guys to, uh, I want this to be interactive. So, you know, if I ask you questions, nod your head or raise your hand. Um, and then we are going to have a Q&A at the end of the session uh, in order for you guys to ask questions. But if there's anything burning, feel free to pop up that hand. There's the uh, emojis at the bottom that you can put up a hand and maybe we can stop for a second and just uh, address maybe any of the immediate questions if that works. All right, so one of the things, or the biggest thing when we are starting a business, growing a business, working uh, in our career is, you know, how do we do it all? And I love this quote, which is, I can do it all, just not all at once. And we are in, uh, I guess, a generation where we are very reactive because we have these things at our disposal constantly and in our hands. So I basically say we have the world's problems in our hands these days. So we need to start focusing on our micro environments in order to help reduce overwhelm and stress. And how we do that are through some simple steps. So one is through email, how to manage your email. That's a massive, massive one that my clients constantly, it's sort of where we begin. A lot of my clients deal with this. So how many of you have felt like this? And I'm going to share my screen here. the slideshow on. Sorry, guys, one moment here. I'm going to stop sharing for a sec. the end of my presentation. Sorry, guys. All right. So how many of you feel like this? You get a little overwhelmed when you think about opening that inbox in the morning, or sometimes it's in the afternoon, you've got so many things going on and you think, God, I want to open my email, but I know I'm probably going to be faced with hundreds of emails and where do I start? So this is somewhere where um, people start that reactive state versus being proactive. So here are some tips on how to start being proactive with your email. So number one is folders. So some of you may already use folders and maybe some of you can put up your hand um, and show us like how many of you are using folders currently. Awesome. So folders definitely can help keep us organized, but there is something a little deeper into this, which is how are you using your folders, right? Because we wanna make it as productive as possible. So when we think about using folders, we want to make sure that they are dedicated to things that are the most impactful items or tasks that we need for our business. So I'm just gonna stop sharing here. So what I mean by that, is that you should have maybe no more than five folders. Five could even be a lot for some people, but five folders. Now we think about the most impactful things. So to stay 
proactive versus reactive, we need to think about the impactful areas to our business. So impact folders would look like, who do you report to? Or who are the most important people that you know when they email you, you want to get their email ASAP, okay? So if you are running your business, these could be people like your suppliers. Maybe there are certain employees that you definitely know that when they email you, you want to know that you're getting back to them right away. It could also be orders, right? We're all in business. So depending on what type of business you have, orders is very essential to the impact of your business. And then customer service or marketing or any others. So the idea behind the folders is that when you enter into your inbox, you want to go to those folders first. So you're forgetting about looking into the 150 that are sitting in that inbox and you look over to your folders and you see that you have maybe five from a supplier, maybe there's 10 orders, yay, uh, and maybe three from somebody else. But the idea is that you are diving into those folders first, which means that you are making the biggest impact in that moment in your business from an email standpoint. So how many of you feel like this is something that would be useful or helpful for you? Again, just maybe nod or raise your hand. Yeah, so I'll give you an example of how you can share this. If some of you have teams, this is a great way to help your team build productivity. So as an example, when I was working for a large retail global brand, I had my leader as one of my folders. I had orders. I had the customer service representative that worked directly on my accounts. As an example, those three, I knew that I needed to answer to them immediately when I opened my inbox. Those were the most urgent emails. So again, this is a way of being able to be proactive and stay impactive, or <laughs> maybe I just made up a new word, but in, have impact in your business. All right, let's look at the next one. So the next one was set dedicated time. So as I said before, we have our phones and our laptops and basically digital assets in our hands constantly. So it's caused us to be reactive to everything, right? There's a ding, there's a notice, maybe you're constantly checking things because it's just the way our brains work. It's like, feed me, feed me, feed me more information. And because we have it at our disposal, either in front of us at our desk or on our phones in our hand, it's very hard to resist that. But I can tell you that many successful people tend to make email a very set task in their day rather than being on email all day. So let me just preface this by saying first is that I do know that there are some people that their job entails them to be on email all day. And this is fine. If that is your job, then that is what you need to do. But if you are someone who is working in a business where you don't rely on being on email all day long and you need to work in your business and on your business rather than just reacting to emails, then this step would be for you. So set dedicated time. Many successful and uh, uh, people and executives use this tool where they will set time. They spend an hour in the morning opening their email. First, you look at your impact folders, then you chew away at some of the inbox, but you time it and you set the boundary that you will end it after one hour to two hours, depending on how much time you feel you need in that morning. So everything is taken care of. The next one is that you go to work, you do your working in and on your business, and then all of a sudden, maybe at 1 p.m., so that's a good time, you've eaten lunch, you're nicely fueled, 1 p.m., you go ahead and you start another hour in your inbox. So do another hour, check the impact folders, and then your inbox items. Then close it after, set that boundary, like I said, for one hour, and then Get work in or on your business, get all the other things that you need to get done. And at the end of the day, with one hour to spare or two hours to spare, depending again, how your business functions, use that time to finish off some of those emails. Now, I just want to be really clear here and share with you that 
when we consider email, email was a great way to get communication quicker um, and to allow us to work more efficiently. But what it doesn't mean is that you need to answer everything this minute, the minute you see it in your inbox. And this is where that reactive state starts happening is we think that we need to get back to everybody immediately, but that is incorrect. So think about things, um, if you have written an email to someone and something isn't happening, you do a follow-up, but if it becomes really urgent, what do you do? You probably pick up the phone and call them, or maybe you go by their desk or their work space and area and you go and ask them if they have a couple of minutes because there's something really urgent that you want to get done. So think about your inbox as, yeah, some things are urgent, but not all of it is urgent and important at that moment. So again, we wanna be proactive with it instead of reactive. So set some times, having blocks of times to do your email. What will happen is that you focus on that one thing for that hour or two, and that will help you minimize the scatter brain or the monkey brain that they call it, or feeling like you're being tugged in all areas. Dedicate that one hour to two hours. No one can continuously multitask through the day and be productive. There are studies out there that prove that being uh, in a multitask situation means that your brain is constantly having to switch gears, which is taking up energy away from you to be able to remain impactful and um, proactive in your business. Okay, how many of you like that tip? Hopefully some of you do. I can't see all of you with the way that the screen is, but I do see some of you putting your hand up. So thank you, this is awesome. Okay, I'm gonna share it again for the last email point. One to two hours to plow through. So what does that mean? I've already sort of talked about this. So what this means is that when you go in your inbox, you look at the impact folders, then you dive into your inbox for whatever time you have remaining in that block that you've dedicated to your email. You look through however you do it. Some people look at all the subject lines and decide which ones they're going to read. Some people just take the next one and answer them as they've come in. Whatever works for you will work for you. But the idea is that once you've worked on the impact folders and you've worked through what what you can for that hour, you will dedicate time later in that week when you know that you have some downtime to chew through some of the other stuff that didn't seem important or urgent that wasn't in your impact folder, and that you couldn't chew through in that one hour to two hours that you dedicated. So there's always going to be time to hit email, but you want to do it productively. And these three tips are a great way to do it. Okay, does everyone feel good about this? We can, yeah, move on to the next session or the next section, I should say. All right. Okay, break down your tasks and projects into micro steps. So how many of you feel you use micro steps currently? And one of the things is micro steps can look very different for many people, but essentially micro steps are breaking things down into mini steps that you do so that you're not burning yourself out. And I'm gonna give you an example. Okay, much like this this um, session today, I have a session that's coming up in a week's time with a European company where I do classrooms like this for corporations. So there is a topic and I have to build out a presentation and do the whole creative, I'm responsible to create the whole deck that is being presented. Now to sit in one moment or one day and do that A to Z will tax out my brain I will be less creative and I will start slowing down and losing my motivation for the project. So how many of you feel like when you have tackled a project from A to Z in one moment, that it somehow makes you feel drained even though you may have completed it? Yeah, it can happen. So what, what basically, the, I've taken this tool from watching it work for my clients. Um, and I was applying it to this particular thing for next next week with this European company. So 
what I did is three weeks out from when this deck was due just to hand in, I decided that I was just going to take the shell of the, the PowerPoint and without getting fancy or anything, I just plugged in my key points per slide. So that's a micro step. That day, that's all I did was put my key points into the slide and I closed it. And then I got on with all the other things I needed to do that were actually important for that day or that week for me to accomplish. So week number two, now two weeks out from the presentation, I went back in and I decided to look for the images that went along with each of these points. So I took one hour in my day and I looked for all the images that would relate to the points that I want to deliver in this presentation. And I just put them in raw. I didn't fancy it up. I didn't try to you know, um, make it look all fancy. I just put the images on the right slides and I closed it. So in one hour, I had that done. Then week three, when I had to finalize it, I was motivated because I was like, wow, I already have a good chunk of this presentation done. Now I just need to finesse it. I need to make sure that my points are clear. I need to make sure that the images are reflective of what that looks like. And I want to make sure that this presentation um, is you know, valuable and looks great as I'm presenting it. So that last session, number three, was the third micro step was just making sure that the finesse was there um, to deliver this presentation. And when I sent it off, I felt motivated. I'm now inspired to do this talk. I haven't burnt myself out trying to put it all together. So how many would like to feel that is not burnt out after a project, but actually still inspired by it? Yeah, it's a, it's a big one. So Energy is really the fuel behind our businesses. So if your energy is tapping out, you can't expect to get the inspiration, the motivation, the creativity. So how do you protect it? So micro steps is a great way for you to work on something for a little bit, still reserve your energy for all the important things that have to happen in that moment or that day or that week. And then also be inspired to continue to work on it because you haven't exhausted yourself in that moment. Okay, are we ready to move on to number three? All right, share the screen again. So the impact board, this is something that you guys will get in your handout. So the impact board, personal impact board will look a little different than this, but I put this in there for you guys to start getting used to using an impact board. So what is an impact board? An impact board is here to help you stay organized with things that are due either this week or this month. So most of my clients are using this personal impact board for monthly projects. So I'll give you an example. Um, early, early on in my career, I had met this, this um, director who had said that when he's building strategies, he views it as a vase, so a glass vase, and you put, put rocks, so four or five rocks into that vase. And I'm just going to stop sharing for a second. All right, so you have this vase and you put four big rocks in it, let's say, which are your strategies or the four big goals that you wanna hit this month. And then you pour sand in it. Sand is all the other things that we do in our business every single day that just have to happen or they're all the other things that maybe aren't super important to complete this month, but absolutely have to get done at some point, okay? So this is a great metaphor, visual, however you want to want to look at this. But the idea is that he stays focused, he or she, on these four blocks for the month. So how do you do that? You do that with the impact board. So the impact board has just three easy steps. You write your goal for the month. So keep in mind, most of my clients love doing this per month, but feel free if you want to do it every week or if you wanna do it every quarter, it's really up to you how you use this because it needs to work for you. So my clients use it every month. They put in their monthly goal. Now they probably put in four or five goals. Like I said, think of those rocks, four or five goals. 
And then as they work on those goals throughout through that week and that month, they put down the progress. So maybe as an example, and I put an example here. All right, so here's the example. So let's say one of your goals is to get three new clients in this month. For some of you, your businesses, it's more like, hey, if I can get 100 clients in this month, great. But really, this is totally um, up to what type of business you have and what type of goals you have. So three new clients this month, the progress is, wow, okay, I've landed two new, or I have two new prospects, and they're in review. And on December 15th, they're going to let me know if they're going to move ahead. But I've also achieved something in this goal. And I've actually achieved already getting one new client on board. Okay, a second goal could be create one month of blog posts. So some of us, when we're solopreneurs, especially, we're wearing all the hats. So you have to do your accounting, you have to do your marketing, you have to do your sales, you have to do your blog posts, your content creation. So this impact board is a really great way to stay on top of that. So I have to create one month of blog posts. So what does this mean? Progress could be not necessarily that you've written a blog post, but a progress could be that you've put in your calendar an hour or two to work on this. That could be a progress point. Or maybe it is that I've written one blog and I know I'm. this is going to um, add to my progress. And then the achievement is however the, the achievement looks. So is it that you did that one hour? Put that in the achievement section. Did you finish a blog? Great. Put the blog in the achievements so maybe you did one blog, but you want to do three more, put three in the progress or put two in the progress and one in the achievement. So the idea here is that you are keeping track of what it is that you're working on that are the most impactful goals to your business at this moment. So when people talk about working in your business and on your business, working on your business is that proactive piece. What do you need to keep doing and fueling towards your business in order to keep it healthy and moving forward? So I'm going to actually get up here for one second. Sorry, my dog's behind me. And I'm going to show you just the raw version of my impact board. So I don't use a sheet. I make this big and visible in my office or wherever I am um, working from that day. So obviously I can't bring it to a cafe, but... I use a whiteboard. I have my goal, my progress, and my achievement. So not pretty, but this board works. And why it works is because when I get when I get scattered brain, when I start looking over at my desk and I see other notes about things that I should be doing or things, tasks that have to be done, I look back at that board and I say, wait a minute, this month, what I really need to focus on and deliver to the business are these four or five things. Where am I at with it? How am I going to tackle it? Do I need to reserve time in my calendar for it? Or can I start this right this moment? So it's just a visual that takes you back to being focused on what will be most impactful. So how many of you like this tool? Yeah, it's so simple. And we all get pulled in many directions, right? Especially if you are starting out or even a seasoned entrepreneur, there are always a ton of things for us to do. And this board is such a simple way. Make it visible wherever you can in your office, whether it's on your desktop, whether it's on your desk or the wall. I just leave mine off the wall because I like to pick it up and start writing stuff on it. Um, but it is one of the favorite tools of my clients that they've just almost feel like they've simplified project management. All right. I believe that was the last slide, but I'm going to double check. Yes. So that was the last slide for me. And let me just reiterate some of the points that we talked about here. So number one is how to be proactive with your email versus reactive. So we wanna make those impact folders, I call them, but you can call them whatever you want. Impact folders where you have a maximum, I would say of five of the most important people or things that you know make an impact in your business that you wanna answer ASAP, no matter how many emails you have. Number two is the micro steps. So micro steps really help us stay um, energized around long projects 
or long tasks that we have to do. Breaking it up into small pieces. Also, what that does is it helps you save energy. So when you think about, you know, if you spend all day, let's say three or four hours, no one can afford three or four hours out of their business, especially if you're an entrepreneur, to work on one single thing, unless it makes the biggest impact. So even though that example that I used with that presentation is going to be impactful, I have a million other things that I need to get done in my business during these three weeks leading up to this presentation that I couldn't let that sit on the wayside because that would just be a burden on me. And then it would build up probably resentment or frustration, overwhelm. So the idea is that when you break these things up into smaller pieces, you're more energized around them. Maybe it helps you space it out so you actually get more creativity towards what it is that you're working on. And maybe new opportunity and new ideas pop up between the times that you've set to work on it. And number three is the micro steps, uh, sorry, is the impact board. So looking at the impact board in a way of helping you stay on track every single day, you look at that board, it should bring you back to focus on the impact or most impactful items in your day. All right. Um, should we open this up now to some questions, comments? Yeah, Catherine, it's Kathy Burrell here. Uh, yeah, we've got 59 comments in the, the wow. chat. Okay. <laughs> so Jen is there as well to help us. And yeah, if you want to, Jen, do you, could you read a couple of questions or do you want to read some, Catherine, or does anyone want to put up their hand and, and say a question? We can do it lots of different ways, of course. Anything really pressing? So, sorry, if I could just say too, I noticed that um, I didn't talk about batch work. So I don't know if that's a question that came up. So, sorry, I... Um, realize that I didn't really talk about batch work, but I'll just give you um, a quick snapshot. Batch work is taking similar, similar tasks and doing them in one combined time. So when I talk about like the micro steps, that would be a good place as well to maybe combine certain things. So I'll just give you a simple example. If you are creating content for your business, um, and let's say you are building an offering. So like, a, let's say a program that has steps in it, but you also need to do a blog post and you also need to um, do maybe a social media post. What do you think you need to start with first? Some people think it's like the shortest and easiest one, but the truth is you should start with the biggest one, which is the program or the offering with all those steps. The reason is, is that each of those steps can now become part of your content. So you can take one piece out of the full program that you create and create a blog post or a social media post in the condensed form of that one point. So that means that you basically created three pieces of content from actually working on one piece. So I hope that that helps clarify what batch work Yes, that's great. Question. Any uh, questions? Um, my name is uh, Sharon Summerfield, and my business is the Nourished Executives, so I help executives and leaders prevent burnout. Um, nice. But I worked as an executive assistant for many years, so um, email can be a curse or a blessing. Um, I know when I worked as an executive assistant, um, a lot of things you were talking about email because I managed multiple emails across multiple servers. Um, so hundreds of emails a day. Um, oh, would love your thoughts on the use of categories, reading pains, um, yeah, categories and reading pains in particular, because myself, I find it's so easy to add another folder and the folders mm -hmm. can almost be like they're attacking you because there's so many because it's so easy to do that. Um, so I'd love your 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 thoughts on the use of, of categories and 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 using different views in your mailbox. Yeah. So um, 
As a coach, I definitely give systems and tools as you see, some of the ones that we talked about today, but they really have to work for the client and depending on what works best for you. So I can tell you just, you know, I have some clients that if they have too many, you know, sometimes you can color coordinate or put flags that actually stresses some of my clients out to the point where we realize like that actually is the, the pain point for them. So I would say that however your brain functions to the best of its ability and how it works best for you is the, the route to take. So as a coach, I can give all these tools and systems, but ultimately we put them to test to see what works best for you. So can you give me an example of cate cate like categories? Is it like you have, um, I don't know, like contracts or, or travel or something like that is, um, I tend to use them instead of folders. So I'll use categories for different clients, different projects, um, you know, different, different topics. Um, I, I find a great reminder on that I'm having less folders. Um, and, and I find the flags to be really helpful and, okay. and, and people that are, and, and it's also, I find actually educating people on how to use email, because I actually think the bigger problem from my perspective and my experience has been people don't know how to use email. They don't know how to use a subject line. So if we can got, actually get back to the basics of where mm. and put the topic in the, in, in the subject line, it's easier to scan. And I find you get, um, a better, better, robust response. So you're, you're eliminating all that back and forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that you bring up the point about subject lines. So as an example, I was working with a company recently and with uh, their administrative staff, it's more easily to do that with. So meaning that whenever um, their administrative uh, staff are sending something to, let's say, a VP or sending something to their leader, they have very specific, like what you're describing, categorical subject line so that those VPs or those uh, even the executive assistants working with the VPs or executives can easily identify what that is. The problem with that is that it depends on the dynamic of your team, right? So it, it will certainly work in some environments really, really well, um, but it may not work for everybody. So how do you create a system that um, helps keep the flow going? But I love, I love what you say that it is teaching people how to use email because there's a lot of um even now you know with slack and even microsoft teams people don't even use that very well in a lot of cases and it causes a lot of overwhelm for a lot of people or they're wasting really productive great time um so i love that piece i think it's just about figuring out like the dynamics of whatever team it is that you're working with and and seeing what what would work best or what if you coin the best practices, right, um, for that um, team. Catherine, not to to cut everybody off or anything like that, but we've got a whole bunch of questions. Okay, yeah. So yeah, what? Uh, thanks very much for your question. That was great. But this one is really good too. Um, Rhonda wants to know um, if your system works if you do a board for a day-to-day -day basis rather than a monthly goal setter and how do you kind of pick the monthly goals when there's so many different necessities that may not be business building in particular but might be kind of your life in particular <laughs> like we're talking about smaller entrepreneurs here you know with one or two or three staff you know do you have any comment on that Catherine? Yeah, sure. I would say that once again, like um, as a coach, my job is to make sure that things work efficiently for my clients and everyone works differently. But there are some systems that really can work for many types of, uh, I guess, brain capacity or b how people naturally work and when they're most fueled or their energy, they're in the zone. Um, but I would say with the with the impact board, it has to work for you. So I'm, I'm a big believer of trial and error. I always ask my clients before telling them like, you should be doing this. It's not what really what a coach does. It's like, I'm going to ask you or encourage you to just try this for two weeks, maybe three. And if it, if it's working, keep doing it. And if it's not, let's tweak it. Let's figure out what's not working in that. Cause sometimes it's knowing what isn't working 
that will lead you to obviously what, what will work. So I would say you can certainly use the impact board per week if that is something that would really, really help you stay on track. It's just that that then becomes even more work for you to think every week of what are you going to put on that board? What are you going to put on that board? But I'm not saying that it wouldn't work. Um, where the impact board came from was that when you're starting a business, there are certain milestones that typically entrepreneurs want to hit every month, whether it's a revenue goal, whether it's creating something, you know, some new evolution to the business, or whether it's getting their processes together, right? Um, and so that's where the monthly thing came from, is that it's really easy to say once a month on the first day of every month or the last day of every month, my clients sit with their board, they think about the big, those big rocks, right, that they want to accomplish in the next month, and they write those on the board, and then that keeps them on track. Because Deep down, they know what they need to do to hit those goals, but at least the, the board is just helping bring their mind back to it whenever they're getting distracted by all the other things as entrepreneurs that we get faced with. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it's a great, yeah, it, I think that's, um, again, the idea that there's a one, fit, uh, one size fits all solution for every single person in business, women, woman in business is, kind of a fallacy you know if anyone tells you that it's not true 100%. and I really, I really loved what you um how you uh, mentioned the micro steps as you know give yourself a break you know like a, a micro step here you know just as long as you're staying on track to kind of get what you need done to move your business forward um there's a, a quite a few comments in the chat about this idea of you know, yeah, you know, it sounds like it's going to work, but what about this? And what about that? And, and, you know, it just, um, it shows, uh, uh, we love your thoughts on it. The idea that you're pulled in so many different directions, but your business is important, especially if it's your living. And the idea that these steps in your business can actually make the rest of your life work better, <laughs> you know, organization and that sort of thing. I'd love to hear what you have to say about that, Catherine. Yeah, sure. I think, you know, um, how many of you feel like you procrastinate? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. It's a lot of us procrastinate. And um, that's just a normal part of human nature. This is what we do. So think about like, if I asked you, would you rather continue? Like, let's just talk about big projects. So um, would you rather, or maybe I should ask it this way. How do you feel when you procrastinated and then you're getting that last project done or that project done last minute, I should say, probably not feeling great. Might feel good to get, finally get it off your plate, but while you're doing it, there's probably frustration, maybe a bit of resentment, maybe annoyance at yourself that you waited so long to get it done. I mean, I'm just speculating. These are some of the things that I know I struggle with and go through. And this is why I really looked at the micro steps as an option to help or even that batch work is because what it did is it stopped me from feeling like I'm on the 11th hour trying to get all this done, then disappointed because I don't think I put as much effort or creativity or thought into it. I actually gave myself the space and the time to do these things well and reserve my energy in the process. So if that's your goal is wanting to deliver, we know nothing is perfect. So we're never going to have a perfect presentation or a perfect end to our project. But the idea is that can we walk away feeling energized, motivated, still and satisfied with what we did? That's great. Celia, you have your hand up. Did you have your hand up? I love that. I just saw someone have a question. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> yeah, just a quick question. I was wondering, Catherine, if you have like a sort of like methods when things have been sort of like out of control. So like right now, for instance, you know, I have like every, you know, my emails are insane. Uh, my computer is insane, everything. But I'm dealing with emergency because I have, you know, I'm prior prioritizing things that will, you know, make my business thrive for the moment. But how do you deal with that pile that you gently put under the carpet, basically? Um, well, a good way is to, you know, um, 
it's almost like I say, you need to recalibrate at those, those moments. And to recalibrate means that you need to really get the bird's eye view of what's actually happening at that moment. Um, don't worry about the why, because that will naturally come as you, as you figure out what's actually happening. And a good way to do that is to either make a, a list of everything that you feel is happening right now. Just like regurgitate it onto, onto paper, just get it out. It doesn't matter what format, just write down everything that you feel is happening right now. That's like taking your attention. And then a good thing to do to recalibrate it is to look at each one and ask yourself one to 10 in this moment, meaning in this day or week or month, how important is it for me to get this done and rate it one to 10, 10 being it's absolutely urgent for me to get this done. And one being not so much, this can wait. So then when you look at that list and you've rated them, then you put them all under one through 10 and just see where things fall. And that will give you some sense of where to put your energy. Thanks, Celia. That's a great question. Um, Becky has her hand up as well. Becky, go ahead. Thank you. Oh, One okay. of my reasons for just slowing down and starting to burn out is because I work from home and I have a family and I balance every day between work and then the kids and then dinner and then work a little bit more and then take kids places. So, um, and I'm the person who picks up and drops off. And so I'm switching constantly all day between prioritizing family and prioritizing work. If I could focus on one or the other, I'd be fine. It's the balance yeah. of bouncing all day, every day, starting at 5.30 a.m. until yeah. nine at night. So is there any extra tips on how to be able to navigate through, like I used to be able to work a nine hour day and then pick up from childcare and that's not my life anymore. And then that's where things fell off the rails for me. Okay, so maybe a question would be, um, how is working at home for you versus working in a different space? It's fine. Being at home is fine. I've gotten used to it through COVID and, and I do go to the office every once in a while. Kids are in school during the day. Okay. Um, and I have that time to myself. It's just before 8.30 and after 2.30, everything, yeah. you know, I got my five hours of work in and I need eight or nine. And okay. I don't seem to get it afterwards because it's just too much fluidity happening throughout the house. Okay. So I could be, I could be assuming here, but are there some days that um, have less activities with the children versus others? Yeah. Okay. So in this case, I would suggest maybe trying, um, choosing one or two days in the week where you dedicate some of that time where you know you can place it, even if it's in the evening. So I'll give you an example. There are a lot of um, solopreneurs uh, like myself, when you start your business, when you're working for other organizations, that's also a reality of a lot of people who are just starting out, um, is dedicating just two days in the week that that is your dedicated boundary set work time, meaning maybe it's a Tuesday night and a Thursday night and you spend two to three hours working on your business only. So in your case, because you have such a full life with family and children and all these responsibilities and take, I mean, it physically takes you right to different places is making sure that you, you set those on days where you can actually accomplish it or achieve it. Um, so is that a Thursday night or maybe it's a morning? Like I, I imagine mornings are a little more hectic than the evening. Uh, because, you know, once kids are fed and bathed and then hopefully downtime before bed, um, you're able to to maybe start transitioning into that one to two hours that evening. But I would suggest try and pick and for now, maybe it doesn't have to be two days, maybe just try one day and just see how it's going and see if that's the right day that you could do that. Great. So uh, we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, I wanted to assure everybody that uh, we are going to be, um, this is recorded and you're going to get a copy of it so you can listen to it at your leisure. And Catherine's contact information is going to be included as well so that, you know, if there's something, you know, that she didn't cover that you, you needed to know. 
Um, I know some people have to leave early. So Catherine, any parting words before I switch back and uh, we wrap up the session? Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for all of you showing up. And, you know, all of you are working really hard in your business. And I know what that's like. And it's, it's overwhelming at the best of times, but certainly during the holidays, we can't forget that it is the holidays, which means that we should be spending more time with some joy and with the people that we love. And so a good way to lower the burnout and the stress is to actually have some joy with the people that surround us. So um, make sure that you dedicate that time and don't make the holidays more frustrating than they need to be because <laughs> sometimes they can be um, overwhelming just in themselves. But I wish you guys all the best with whatever businesses that you're creating. And as Kathy mentioned, you guys have um, the PDFs of the slides that I showed you. So you'll have just some tools. Um, but there's also a link that uh, Jennifer and Kathy will be providing, which is just to a self-care burnout. It's a free guide that's on my website. Um, so that will help just from a pure self uh, personal perspective. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think all of you are amazing women doing your thing and I absolutely love it and keep going and trust me there are times that will ebb and flow but um just pay attention to that recalibration when you need to and uh tell yourself it's okay to take a step back to know that that will actually help you move forward yeah that's wonderful advice and you know Catherine you're getting a lot of you know thank yous you've saved me yep. you're a rock star so thank Aww. you very much and I'd love to to have everybody um be able to kind of put into the um the chat you know that we're um that, that this is the kind of content that you're looking for from WeBC I mean you know it's great so yeah. uh um, I want to thank Catherine McCourt, uh, our panelists for today. I think this was a timely session. Certainly, we're a couple of days from November, but I also think it's something that we should be talking about more as a group because mm -hmm. we can't do it all. You know, we have to kind of work on our businesses in such a way that yeah. burnout doesn't affect your family and everything else like that you know or your mental health and that's so important these days so thank you very much Catherine uh we really appreciated you today thank you um, guys yeah thanks I I wanted to let everybody know that um we've got a couple of more things in December of course you all have so much time to attend so that's great uh December 13th we're uh doing a virtual networking uh, session and January 31st, we're doing um, a strategy for small business sessions about pricing your product or service, which is again, so uh, important. So um, I just, I just oh, wanted to yes. thank oh, everyone for joining oh. us today. <laughs> Somebody I think is not on mute and they probably should be, but that's okay. I want to thank everybody for joining us. Um, visit our website, we-bc.ca for more information and please sign up for our eblast newsletter. Jennifer is going to share the poll. Um, we love to have you fill that out. Um, it'll just take a couple of seconds and otherwise, yeah, um, we're on social as well. We're on Instagram. There's a great contest going on in December for any of you retailers out there, um, where you can, we feature your products on our website. You can win prizes. It's uh, fantastic. I think it's called we grow BC. So go to our website and there's a little stringer that talks about it. This is our, our poll. I hope everybody uh, goes ahead and fills it out. And like I say, we're here for you. I also work um, for WeBC on contracting client service. So if you're looking for something and you're looking for us at client services, it's hello at client service dash WeBC. So yeah, um, we hope to hear from you uh, during the poll and it'll probably be up for one more minute and then Jen will end the meeting and everybody can go about your day. Uh, goodbye everybody. And thank you so much for participating today. And uh, take care, everybody. Um, yeah, um, burnout's bad. Everything else is great. So good. We're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you.